Rice water for hair growth? Does rice water really grow hair? I mean, if you go back in time to the Heian period in Japan, women had healthy floor length hair and attributed a lot of that back to rice water. And in today's world, the Yao women in China who live in Hanglao are famous for having six feet long hair and credit not having gray hair until they reach their 80s back to rice water bathing. And in this video, we will look at the three pros and cons of rice water for hair growth so you can get a short and sweet rundown of what you should know before trying it out yourself. If you guys are new here, this channel is all about helping you make informed decisions as well as be in the know when it comes to your health and wellness. And I would love for you all to gently tap on the like button down below. And if you really like the content, then consider subscribing as well. Also, if you guys are on Instagram, you can follow me there too. Now, without wasting any more time, let's get straight into it. So what in rice water makes it so special? Isn't it all just starch? And while it is true, 75 to 80% of rice is made of starch, and you could see it after you let, it, let the rice soak. It looks murky and foggy. Well, it turns out there's more than just starch. It contains amino acids, B vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants, and a very interesting type of sugar responsible for cell membrane structuring called inositol, which we'll come to in a second. And there are several methods of making the rice water preparation. You can soak the rice in water by taking half a cup of uncooked rice with two to three cups of water and let it soak for 30 minutes. Then strain the rice into a clean bowl and keep the water or you can ferment the rice water by leaving it in room temperature for two days before straining it and then actually massaging it into the hair and scalp, covering it with a shower cap for up to 20 minutes before finally rinsing it all out. And like I said, there are multiple variations to this. Some even like to boil it and add in essential oils, which by the way, I made a video on the top three hair oils I believe has the best shot at growing hair, which you can watch here. Whatever method you choose, I think it is fair to say you need to stay consistent with them if you choose to try it out yourself. And with that said, let's actually move on to the three pros and cons, with the first one being the inositol. Now, from the limited information that is out there, inositol was found to reduce surface friction of hair as well as improve elasticity of hair. If this actually were to be the case, that's a tremendous benefit just right there because we know if hair strands are resilient to friction, less hair is going to fall out, which means more hair actually stays on your head. This is why I'm in favor of silk pillowcases, although you got to wash them more often. They do reduce the frictional pull on hair overnight versus other pillowcases, which you'll find a ton of hair stuck to on when you wake up in the morning. The second pro for rice water is the fact that it contains magnesium. And the great part about that is that it can dissolve calcium buildup on the hair from hard water. You see, when calcium deposits in the hair follicles, it can cause hair loss, which is why magnesium oil was, was used to remedy this in the settings where there's hard water coming from like your shower head. Now, obviously, you can get a water softener to address this better, which in the, that is the long-term solution. And I did leave a link to one that I recommend down below. They're quick and easy to install and can really make a difference in not only just your hair, but your overall skin health as well. And lastly, rice water contains niacin or vitamin B3, which can reduce inflammation by increasing blood flow within the scalp and bringing oxygen to the actual hair follicles as seen in this pilot study looking at females with patterned alopecia. Now that we got the pros out of the way, what could actually be the cons or the actual harms of using rice water so we could go full circle? And I get it, you might find tons of people in favor of using rice water for hair, but here's the thing, you'll find just as many people who've experienced less than positive results, and this can be due to the first con, which is protein buildup. If you have low porosity hair, which you might be thinking, what on earth is that? It basically is hair that doesn't like to absorb water or treatment due to the cuticles having few amounts of pores. The rice water will just sit on top of the hair and can cause extreme dryness and sometimes damage since the proteins become harder over time, which can lead to brittle and dry hair. The second con is drying scalp. 
Let's say your hair is able to absorb the rice water within the first 30 minutes or so. If you have yeast overgrowth on the scalp that you aren't aware of, chances of a dry flaky scalp will only get worse if you expose all of that starch and sugars in the rice water for a long time. And lastly, the arsenic. Rice that's grown in the US is often grown in what used to be cotton fields. These fields back in the day were sprayed with insecticides that contained arsenic and those trace elements still remain here today. And yes, the amounts are not large enough for the governing bodies to take them off the shelf, but I still think it's important that you know that they are there, especially the milky residue left from that rice water. Basmati rice imported from nations without an arsenic issue like India may be lower in arsenic versus here in the US, with the exception of California rice, which has fewer contaminated rice patties than other states like Texas and Arkansas. And no, brown rice ain't any cleaner either since brown rice can contain 50% more arsenic than white. So do be aware of that. In the end, using a rice water hair rinse is overall safe to try at home to see if it works for you. But if your main concern is hair growth, make an appointment with a dermatologist or a trichologist to address the underlying cause of your hair loss because hair loss is multifactorial and TikTok does not have all the answers.